My name is Tammy. And I have a war for my life. What's happening with uh, camera three? Right, uh, I'm getting a warning light on my P360. Okay, Cookie, are you there? Yeah. Hey, you're a single player, is that right? All right, could you give yeah, me your name, I'm please? Doing, uh, ding dong, the witch oh, yeah, all right, witch that's what I needed to know. Okay. 30 seconds. Oh, what do you, you have an appointment later or something? Well, I wouldn't want to keep you. Somebody here is in a big rush, so let's start the game. All right, come here. Get ready for some fun. The category is... It's safe to throw at someone's head. Okay, it shouldn't be too tough. This question's gonna be worth a grand. Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. The word SCUBA is an acronym for self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. What about NERF? Never enough real fun, non-edged resilient foam, no extra retail frills, or NERF is not an acronym for any... Shebang! NERF means NERF. Okay, pick a category. Look to do, it's question number two. Here's the category. Makes your mouth water. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Hang on tight, because here we go. At which party should you feel least comfortable if someone announced, I'm hungry? The Donner Party. They tried to make the trek out west in 1846, got stuck in the snow, and uh, ate each other. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. question number three. The category. Mathematics and the People's Court. Pop a right answer for this one, you got 3,000 greenbacks. Today on a Mathematical People's Court. The defendant says he can tell a lot about one side of a triangle by looking at the other two sides in the opposing angle. The plaintiff says he's a liar. What law is on the defendant's side? The law of triangles, the law of cosine. That's what the law of cosine says. You know what's cool about the law of cosines? You try breaking it. Okay, pick a category. You're my question for forevermore. I love you. Question for. This one's gonna be horses and the 50 states. And this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. If the 16th state had kept its original name, the Tennessee walking horse might be called the what? The Franklin walking horse, the Nash walking horse, the Knox walking horse, or the West Carolina walking horse? Whoa, boy. Whoa, whoa. Now the correct answer is... The Franklin Walking Horse. Part of Tennessee was once called Franklin. Fascinating. All right, come on, hit me. Ain't no job, it's question five. The category behind this question is, there's no such thing as a dumb question. There are dumb answers, however. Okay, this one might be a toughie. It's worth 3,000 bucks. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. How many beers in a six-pack? Three factorial, two quartets worth, half a sextet or half a... That would be six and a half. In case you're curious about the correct answer, three factorial. One times two times three equals six. Okay, audience, here we go. Sing it with me. One, two, three, four. Three factorial beers on the wall. Three factorial beers. Okay. Uh-oh, mess butt tit slime chore. It's time for a liver kiss no scope. This gibberish questions category is gnomes and famous wizards. The opening value is $5,000. Okay, now remember, you don't have all the time in the world here. The less time you take, the more money you make. Ready? With what famous quote does this rhyme with? Stairs, glow face, yike gnome. Go for it, type in your hand. Uh. Oh, Toto, stairs glow face, yike gnome, stairs glow face, yike gnome. How about it? Hit me with a kick. Zabba dooba dabbin, question seven. The name in this category is A President by Any Other Name Would Still Be a Sitcom. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. When it comes to presidential names, some are more popular than others. 
Because he shares his first name with the most common first name for U.S. presidents, statistically, which character would have the best chance of becoming president? J.J. James. Only two Johns. And for a place the size of the White House, that's a problem. And here's the right answer. There have been six U.S. presidents named James. Next up, horny women. And we will pay out $3,000 for this one. Okay, get yourself set, it's time. Which opera actually ends with a fat lady singing? Weber's Jesus Christ Superstar, Wagner's Die Valkyrie, Puccini's La Boheme, or Mozart's Don Giovanni? Here's a little spending money. The correct answer is... Die Valkyrie by Wagner. All right, come What's your sign? It's number nine. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Are you going to eat that? The amount on the table is three grand. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Which kind of caviar would an entomologist be interested in studying? Iranian caviar, Latin caviar, Mexican caviar, or Russian caviar? <laughs> Mexican caviar because it's made from waterfly larvae. This one's gonna be downwind from Limburger. And this one's gonna be worth $3,000. Get ready to buzz, cause here it comes. Which of the following lists in order? A breeze, a cheese, and a disease. Zephyr, Dutch Elm, Edom, Cottage, Anthrax, taking candy from a baby. Gust, Feta, and Ricketts. A breeze, a cheese, a disease. Okay, we're at the end of round one, now on to round two. Now pay attention, cause all the questions in round two are worth more money. Let's do it. Okay, pick a cat. The category, nice finger. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. In the James Bond movie Goldfinger, what was Goldfinger's full name? Auric Goldfinger, Sir Raoul Goldfinger, Midas Goldfinger, or Dr. Myron Goldfinger, DDA? Auric. It means gold. Gold. Goldfinger. Kind of has a nice ring to it, don't you think? How about it? Hit. Uh-oh, West Truck Licks Nine More. Once again, it's time for a Junior Lake Test Run. Here's your gibberish category. Big money and the high school dance. The opening value for this gibberish question is going to be 10,000 bucks. Okay, to solve this puzzle, you got to think fast because every second and a half, I'm ticking off a little bit of cash. Okay, get yourself ready. Here comes the puzzle. What does this rhyme with? Boo took Ike's vaudevillian tux. I don't care who's wrong or right, I just want it back, okay? And number one, you'd say it to a guy dressed... Okay, let's see if you know it. Of course, if you're like me and you're occasionally hanging out with billionaires, it's kind of an insult. Alright, come on, hit. Here's the category. Linda's love life and English grammar. Hello, this one's gonna be worth $6,000. Get your eyes focused on the screen, here we go. Which sentence incorrectly uses the verbs lay or lie? Linda laid her clothes on John's chair. Linda laid in bed too long with Charlie. Linda had lain with Steve yesterday or Linda got... Yes, she did, and you're wrong. The correct answer is Linda laid in bed too long with Charlie. It should be Linda lay in bed too long with Charlie. Charlie's pretty gross. How about it? It's question 14. The category is a very thorough body massage. And this one is not going to be easy. $6,000. Hope you're ready because here's one coming at you. If you wanted to massage your master gland, you'd have to remove your what? Your trap. Remove that pituitary and give it a good massage because it's important to growth and sexual maturity. Yeah, you gotta treat your pituitary pretty nice. Oh, I don't 
don't get a massage? Fine. You don't get pubic hair. Next up, Menage à Sept. 6,000 bucks is riding on this one. Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. Which list contains synonyms for three of Snow White's seven dwarfs? Shy Retiree Wallflower, Grouchy Mean Crybaby, Insipid Mary Soporific, or Surgeon Rotund Cheer... Insipid Mary and Soporific. That's Don't Be Happy and Sleepy to you less uh, literary types. Flush your head down the latrine Ease your way with sour cream 16 The category behind this question is A picture's worth a thousand pickups Ah, you're gonna be pretty good if you get this one It's worth six thousand bucks Okay, get your fingers ready, let's get busy If the book The Picture of Dorian Gray Were a country and western song What might it appropriately be called? You left me hanging on a wall waiting You're the reason I started drinking again Why'd you look so good when I feel so old? And let's see the correct answer. Why do you look good when I feel so old? Dorian Gray, he's a guy who stays young looking while a painting of himself looks older and older. The name in this category is Sexually Repressed Commonwealth Cultures. You get this question right, you pocket six grand. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Which of the following is not a 19th century British euphemism for sex? Fiddle, choggle, huffle, or introduce child. What say we go upstairs and fiddle, my little scout? You know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. Choggle. We made this one up. Okay. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Lethal Weapon 20, The Christmas Kiss. And this one is not going to be easy, $6,000. Hang on tight, because here we go. Which of the following couples should be scared to kiss under the mistletoe at Christmas? Mr. and Mrs. Chrysanthemum, Mr. and Mrs. Sidewalk, Mr. You got it. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, no, you didn't. Should have picked this. <laughs> the apple trees. Mistletoe is a tree parasite. It'd be like you kissing under some Christmas tapeworm. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. He's me. Oh. He's Lee. Oh. It's the 19. Here's the category. Zoology and nonsense poetry. Hello, this one's going to be worth $6,000. Okay, get yourself set. It's time. Which of the following is not a monster from Lewis Carroll's poem Jabberwocky? Bandicoot, rap, juju bird, or bandersnake? Bandicoot. <laughs> A bandicoot is actually an Australian marsupial. How about it? Hit me with the category. Wow, honey! honey. It's question number 20! <laughs> the category. There's a fungus among us. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Don't you hate it when you get that itching between your toes? At any rate, here's the question. Which is not a type of mushroom? Fairy ring, crapula, shiitake, or psilocybin? Crapulous. I think he's the guy who cleaned the toilets at the Roman Colosseum. Okay, pick a category. Jack attack time. Soon as you see two words on the screen that go together, buzz in. Oh, you've done the attack before, huh? All right, let's get busy. Here's your clue. Surfing the net. Work. Just keep that in mind. Are you ready? Because we're starting.
definitely jamming on that jack attack. Let's find out how to help your score. That's the well, game. Well, you kick butt. No two ways about it. Of course, it's not like you had any competition to make it a real challenge or anything, but, you know, that's not the point. The point is... You don't know Jack. Hey, Cookie, what's the... Hey, can, can I, uh, can I get something to eat, Helen? Then, Helen. Uh, it's a little healthy. Gordy? Yes. Hey there. We're playing solo. All right, then. Let's have... Cool. Oh, I'm sorry. Your buzzer is the letter B, as in side of beef. Well, I, I wouldn't want to say it's literally yours. Make it happen See, before I blow it. Game. Game. All right, keep... Your pants on. We'll start the damn game. This game is really funny. Let's start with question one. This category is mad scientists on a road trip. This might be a hard one. Three grand. Okay, peel your eyes, free your mind, cause here we go. All right, you and your mad scientist friends are cruising down the road in your perpetual motion machine. Suddenly, the physics police pull you over on what charge? A perpetual motion machine would operate at 100% efficiency or more and is therefore considered impossible under the laws of thermodynamics. <laughs> <clears throat> Make sure you hide those empty beer cans under the seat. Okay. This one's gonna be time to water the frog. And this one's worth $2,000. Get your fingers ready. Here's one coming at you. If Kermit the Frog had been Kermit the Fern instead, his famous song, It's Not Easy Being Green, might have been about the difficulty of producing what? Carbon dioxide, seeds, chlorophyll, or dirty j Chlorophyll makes plants green. <laughs> And there's nothing kids like more than songs about photosynthesis. Question three. And this category is, don't put all your ova in one basket. 3,000 bananas for a right answer here. Some say it's bad to put all your eggs in one basket, but... If the average woman put each of the ova released during her lifetime in separate baskets, the number of baskets would be about the same as what? Number of days in a year, number of eggs in an egg cart, number of sp- Hello, Charlie. <laughs> now the correct answer is... The average woman releases one egg a month for 30 years. That's 360 ova baskets. <laughs> Anyone care for an omelet? The light sounds of question four. The category. Twice the pleasure. 2,000 bucks riding on this one. All right, here we go. The man with two brains is to Steve Martin as... The man with two penises is to Benito Mussolini. The animal with two vaginas is to kangaroo. The kangaroo has two vaginas. <laughs> As do all female marsupials, including the koala, the wombat, and the aptly named platypus. Come on, we The category is, well, I'll be witched. And this one's gonna be worth $1,001 bills. Imagine this episode of Bewitched. Samantha asks the goofy maid Esmeralda to vacuum the living room, but instead she makes the living room into a vacuum. What has Esmeralda done? She's removed all... Esmeralda would have to remove all matter from the room to create a vacuum. <laughs> you should have seen what happened when she was asked to make Tabitha lunch. Okay, pick a cat. And we call this one, All Right, Jailbirds Sing. Two G's for a right answer. Okay, look closely at this picture. If this group actually existed in the 60s, they might have sung Stop in the Name of Law. With that in mind, tell me, what would be the best name for this combination 60s group and judicial branch? Take it! Ah, that looks a lot like Diana Ross. She and the Supreme saying stop in the name of love. And if I'm not mistaken, those are the Supreme Court judges behind her. <laughs> you know, rumor has it that Diana tried to edge Sandra Day O'Connor off the bench. 
How about it? We need a category. The 7 o'clock news with question 7. Alright, next up. Boy, am I hammered. Get it right, get 2,000 bucks. Check this out. Which of the following activities does not require the use of some kind of a hammer? Playing Rodgers and Hammerstein on a piano, testing the patella reflex of Armand Hammer, putting the hammer down in your Mac, or listening to MC Hammer on your radio. Uh, 10 for good, but... <laughs> you don't need a hammer to depress the accelerator in your truck, unless you have a hammer tail. The category is, take this trombone and shove it. All right, this one's not too tough. We're talking one grand for it. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. Ah, imagine a battle royale among the different sections of a standard orchestra. Based on sheer numbers alone, which instrumentalist would emerge victorious? No. In case you're interested, here's the right answer. There are traditionally over 30 violinists who could fight for their cause. Luckily for the tuba player, strength in numbers doesn't always win. Look out! Run away! Run away! Come on! Uh-oh! Press what's with Mime Door! It's time for... Ticklish Press Door! The category for this gibberish question is... This round's on the house. We're going to start out with $5,000 here. Now, you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, and uh, I'm going to be taking away a little bit of cash every second and a half. Okay, now tell me, with what person's name does this rhyme? Sent Jim. Okay, go for it. I hear Quentin Tarantino's next movie is going to be a remake of It's a Wonderful Life. Teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. <laughs> okay, Okay, coming up, this category is... And a Happy New Year! Get this right, get $2,000. Alright, fingers limbered, cause here comes the question. If someone says to you, Merry Christmas, they're wishing you Yuletide cheer, but if someone... Th if you have Trismus or Lockjaw, you have difficulty opening your mouth. <laughs> Merry Trismus. You're a little pal. All right, we've been through round one. Let's get... All right. It's 11 minus 1 plus 2 minus 1 and Category, let's do it. Torture, mayhem, and bikini lines. 2,000 bucks for right answer. Hang on tight, cause here we go. If you were trying to get rid of your unseemly bikini line by using your epilady at the epicenter of a natural disaster, what kind of disaster would you most likely be experiencing? The epicenter is the point on the Earth's surface where the earthquake originates. Good thing you're using an epilady and not a straight razor. About it. We need Twelve. Celebrity voice and. And this question's category is guys who are really in touch with nature. Get this right, you're bringing home six K. Imagine this. A new superhero league called the Forces of Nature is formed to rival the Justice League. Each member gets his or her powers from one of the four basic forces of nature. Who is not a member? Weak Force Boy, Nuclear Man. No, he's a force of nature involved in the decay of radioactive nuclei. He's also the one you'd pick if you're in the mood for arm wrestling. Ready? Go. <laughs> Let me take a second of my time to show you what's right. Nuke. Nuclear energy is not one of the four basic forces of nature. Nuclear man's got problems at home, though. All his kids have three eyes or six fingers, and the neighbors are starting to ask questions. Come on, we need a category. I love 13 number 13. Uh -huh. Category. God, you bonehead. And this one's worth $4,000. It's time to fill in the blank. Limber up those fingers. When you know the answer, buzz in and start typing. 
Oh no, it's about 1445 BC and God's locked the keys to the Ark of the Covenant inside it. Other than the keys, what's in danger of being locked inside the chest forever unless God finds a cop? In case you're interested, here's the right answer. The Ark of the Covenant held the Ten Commandments. Of course, it's Nine Commandments now. God let that don't take the Lord's name in vain one pass. Damn Ark of the Covenant. Take your pick. We wish you a number 14 and a happy Hanukkah. This category is, you'd think they could sing better. Pop a right answer, you got 4K. Let's imagine Hollywood is going to make a sequel to the hit mermaid movie Splash. If the casting director were to make the same mistake as the sailors of old, which creature might be mistakenly cast as the beautiful Lonely sailors would often mistake the manatee's large breasts and slightly forked rear fins for a mermaid. And they settled for Daryl Hannah in the first movie? This one's gonna be Moans and Bones. We are talking four big ones. Okay, take a shot at this. If Grandma wanted to improve her bone strength by increasing the amount of vitamin D in her system, which of the following is the best way to increase her vitamin D? Human skin converts the ultraviolet rays of the sun into vitamin D. <laughs> Seeing Grandma naked converts the nudist colony into a lost colony. Hey, get back here. Where did everybody go? Okay, pick a category. An outstanding selection, because under that category is one major league point-racking question, the Dis or Dad. <laughs> category for this Dis or Dad question is... Little Islands and Big Houses. Now, I'm gonna read off the name... Oh, okay, you already know what you're doing. Let's put 30 seconds on the clock then. Let's do it. Manhattan, Borough or Prison? Queens! Rikers! Sing Sing! Staten Island! Attica! Last one! That's all she wrote! Six out of seven! Good day at the plate, batter! Shoot, Dex. Okay, let's keep a moseying on here. And we call this one Films and Fascists. This one's worth $4,001 bills. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. What classic movie features a freedom fighter's wife begging for it, the Nazis killing for it, and Rick hiding it in a piano as time goes it is a letter of safe transit out of Casablanca. Hey, I don't remember. Do Bogey and Ingrid Bergman do it in that movie? Take your back. 18. And this category is, is suicide really painless? This one's worth six grand. Okay, imagine this scenario from the classic sitcom MASH. For years, Corporal Klinger sought an army discharge by posing as a transvestite. Imagine that sometime later he develops Munchausen syndrome. What would be evidence of this? If Klinger had Munchausen's, he'd do anything to be in a hospital. He may even request to have surgery performed. Okay, Klinger, maybe we should just cut that leg off. Whoa, wait! Ah! How about it? The category, stuck in the Middle Ages with you. Two G's for a right answer. Imagine an episode of MacGyver on which he sees his name in flaming letters on the wall of a castle. Well... If TV's Angus MacGyver had found the literal translation of his name in flames on the castle wall, what would have been written? Angus, bastard of Giver. Angus, maker of tools. 
Angus, maker of tools. You, winner of nothing. Should have picked this. In Irish and Scottish names, the prefix Mac means son of, which would explain why the show wasn't titled Mac Bitch. Come on, we need a category. The Fresh Saver. 20. The category is Dying to be in love. We got four grand on the table. You know, it's nice to spend your life with someone, but some people have to settle for the afterlife. Because both characters are still alive at the end, which of the following couples could end up living happily ever after in a modest house in the suburbs at the... Sandy and Danny right off into the sky in a pink convertible. Poor Sandy from goody goody to hot babe to suburban housewife all in one movie. Okay, pick a category. For the attack. Soon as you see two words, ooh, okay. I'm not wasting any time. Let's get into the attack. Don't forget this clue. Don't be so formal. Let your hair down. Let's play some jack. Here we go. Electrolyte count with these words. You don't know Jack! Great job, everybody. Good show. Okay, let's roll the commercials and uh, contestants. Cookie, what's happening? Hey, listen, if you want to play a game. selection is birds of a feather sleep together and you pocket two thousand bucks if you get this one hey you might remember that in that john waters film pink flamingos divine eats well something special if divine ate that special snack from pink flamingos like an actual flamingo which of these would you see her no flamingos have tongues and divine would probably know bon appetit Flamingos eat with their heads upside down. So not only would Divine be the filthiest person alive, he'd also be filthy and flexible. Oh, wait a minute. Divine isn't alive anymore. Oh, God, now I feel really bad. Right. 
This category is known as Even the Unstable Like to Date. $2,000 says you don't know this one. Okay, now which classic American lit character would most likely have submitted this personal ad? Teen single white male in search of single female. Tall smoker likes kids. Recovering from nervous breakdown, but aside from that, a good cat. The catcher in the rye holding Caulfield. But holding no phonies? Man, what do you think the personals are all about? Okay. One, two, two, brings the almighty three. Now serving. It ain't selling out if you had no morals to begin with. This one can net you a grand. You know, these days it seems like no musician is safe from having one of their songs turned into an advertising jingle. Imagine Grand Funk sold their songs for advertising. Considering their previous name, for which of the following companies would Grand Funk be best suited? Grand Funk was once Grand Funk Railroad. Just the image Amtrak needs. I hear the locomotion sleeper cars are always sold out. Okay, pick a category. You can't stop at three. You gotta have four, yeah! And I believe this one's called... Pick this question to see a bear bot! How does $2,000 sound? Okay, look closely at this naked picture and tell me... What would you wear to get this tan line? Chaps, culottes, gauchos, or jo- When you wear chaps, your ass is hanging out, so you're gonna get a nice reverse tan line. So when someone tells you to stick it where the sun don't shine and you're wearing chaps, it'll be a much quicker process. I need a category. Let's blow this time and head for number five. Okay, give it up for... On the seventh day, God caught a movie. Two thousand bucks for a correct answer. Hey, listen closely and imagine the following movie advertisement. He's been robbed of his wealth. His children are dead. His skin is covered. In the book of Job, God allows Satan to torture Job by destroying his life in order to prove that he has faith. <laughs> the test audience didn't like it. So in the Hollywood version, Job has a beautiful wife, healthy children, and just a small case of adult acne. All right, hit me. Well, what do we have here? You won't need a number two pencil. And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Put it in gear, because here we go. If Charlie Moore from Head of the Class were to give all of his students the Wasserman test, what could he determine from the results? Eric does not have rabies, Dennis's emotional growth has been minimal, Darlene has a genius level IQ, or Arvid does not have syphilis. No, but, you know, I personally think Dennis's emotional growth has been minimal because nobody ever gave that fat, stupid loser any positive reinforcement. In case you're wondering... It's one test the kids really shouldn't cram for. The Wasserman test is a test for syphilis. So, now there's no way anyone will believe Arvid's stories about the girl he met on summer vacation. Okay. Well, looks like this category is, he earns more in a year than some countries. And you're playing for $3,000 cash money. Put your tray in the upright position, it's time for takeoff. If Michael Jordan were to adopt the official name of the country Jordan, how would he be known? Michael of Jordan, Michael of Trans Jordan, Michael of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. Jordan's official name is the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. And whatever his name is, Michael would still learn about a bazillion dinar a year. Category, please. I got some good news for you. You're about to move into a dis or dat. And this dis or dat questions category is precious sitcom characters. Now listen up. I'm going to read off set. Oh, oh, so you already know how to play. Okay, let's put 30 seconds on the clock then. And we're off. Pearl. Stone. Opal. Ruby. Sandra. Rudy. Topaz. Last one. 
Heath Cliff. This is it. That's all she wrote. What can I say? Seven out of seven. I got nothing to criticize here. Now, that does not suck. Let's move on. Okay, pick... Aloha, question number nine. And this one is, there's never a V-chip when you need one. This one's worth a grand. Okay, kids, pay attention here. It's time for some wholesome entertainment. Man kills infant, man kills wife, man is sent to prison, man escapes... The original Punch and Judy had Punch killing his baby, beating his wife to death, being sent to prison, and escaping. People are worried about too much violence on TV. It's the puppet shows we need to watch out for. And we all know how destructive mimes can be. I need a category. Oh yeah, baby, it's the moment you've always dreamt of. It's time for a three-way. Alrighty, here's the deal. Ah, uh, jeez, I guess somebody's not nervous about this. Well then, uh, let's see what we've got waiting for us under the sheets. Let's just say this one's known as, You're no Jacqueline Kennedy. And that can only mean that this three ways about the second most famous American political family, Theodore Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt. Here we go, and for goodness sake, be careful. Oh, yes! That's all. Now catch your breath while we see how you did. Wow, I'm just speechless. Uh, you're the best I've ever had, I swear. Uh, while I regain my composure, let's check out your overall score. So, is it as good for you as it was for me? Probably better. Okay, let's get on with the game. That's it for round one. Let's go to round two. Every question in round two is... Category... Pucker up for showers for the washed up. Play your cards right, you win 4,000 bucks. Yo, you remember that short-lived 70s sitcom, Angie? Imagine a wacky episode of Angie in which Brad showers Angie with angiosperms. What would her reaction most likely be? Alarmed if she doesn't have a radiation suit to... Uh-oh. Hey, got a minute? Take a look at a right answer. <laughs> Angiosperms are flowering plants, so Angie will be pleased. Of course, angiosperms do include trees. Ah! All right, hit me. I'm getting a rating of 12. Over. Here we have what little dolls are made of. 4,000 big ones for a right answer here. Listen carefully to the following scene, and then we'll get to the question. Okay, pay close attention to the following audio file. I had it first. No, I'm playing with it. No, I am. Give it to me. Ew. Oh, you broke it. No, I didn't. Hey, what's that stuff oozing out of it? Oh, gross. I dare you to taste it. With which of these were the kids playing? It's yours if you want it. Stretch Armstrong was that doll made of rubber which, when stretched too far, would break open and leak this jelly-like ooze. Man, I wish I was Stretch. I mean, when I overextend myself, all I do is eat a pint of Ben & Jerry's and cry on the couch all night. The category is, my horse-headed dad, of course, of course. One right answer and $6,000 head your way. Flex those fingers, because here it comes. Which of the following might appear on a Father's Day card given to Mr. Ed? Your loving signet, Wilbur Jr., to the best dad a burrow ever had. Eddie, love you, Pop, your mule, Edward, or love on this special day, your hippie. 
A mule is the offspring of a male donkey and a female horse. Clearly, you're thinking of the short-lived Mrs. Ed. For the curious, here's the right answer. A hinny is the offspring of a stallion father and a donkey mother. Yeah, Mr. Ed may be able to talk and read cards, but let's see him put on his new Father's Day tie. I need... Coming at you, shuffleboard on ice. Get it right, I'm handing over 2K. Okay, here's a sports question coming at you. If the Karate Kid wanted to become the Curling Kid, what household... In curling, players use brooms to sweep the ice in front of the big stone they're sliding along on the ice. Of course, the curling kid wouldn't really learn self-defense. He'd only be able to beat up, like, maybe the ice capades kid. Okay, I need a cat. Not 14, not 16, you're right in between. This little number's known as artificially flavored vanilla. And get this one right, you got 4K coming your way. Okay, remember how Millie Vanilli had her 1989 Best New Artist Grammy taken away? Considering the reason Milli Vanilli was stripped of their Grammy Award, on which of these game shows might you have expected them to appear? Dance Fever, putting on the hit, sit or miss, or name that tune. Milli Vanilli was caught lip-syncing, which is exactly how you win on putting on the hits. I hear Milli Vanilli appeared on another short-lived game show, putting on the hair extensions. Category, please. Uh oh, wet sucked its shine floor. It's time for Flickerish Lesson. Take a look at your gibberish category. One rude bitch. And 10,000 bucks right out of the gate for this one. All right, as soon as you know the answer, buzz in, because I'm taking away some cash every second and a half. All right, this one's for all you kids at heart out there. What popular phrase does this rhyme with? Why, ma'am, snubber, you argue. And this could be it. Type in your... Usually when you say things like, I am rubber, you are glue, it means you don't get along with someone. But have you ever tried getting in a rubber suit and covering your lover with glue? It's quite friendly. All right, hit me. On the big bayou in Louisiana, quest on 17. May I introduce? All this posing is making me tired. Think you can handle $6,001 bills? Okay, watch out, virgin ears. This one's a little saucy. Say Jenny McCarthy's doing another shoot for Playboy, and the photographer wants her to spread eagle. Considering the term's origin, how might she feel as she poses? Athletic like the Philadelphia Eagles? Cheap like a United States quarter? Powerful like a Jeep Eagle? Or patriotic? While its wings are spread, the eagle's legs on the U.S. quarter aren't. Boy, I bet you feel cheap right now. See, now, I could have given you some cash if you pick this. The term spread eagle comes from the figure of an eagle with wings and legs spread on the emblem of the great seal of the U.S. Ain't that just like America? You try to do something patriotic and someone hides you under the mattress. I need a category. Say hello to... Don't bother me, I'm channeling. How does $4,000 grab you? You know, British TV is really boring, especially that English channel. It's like watching the waves come in. Suppose the world were one big TV. If channels were assigned according to the Earth's geography, which station would be farthest from the English channel? The English Channel connects the Atlantic to the North Sea via the Straits of Dover. The Strait of Gibraltar is down by the Mediterranean. <laughs> Although I bet if you slip the guy a 50, he'll hook you up with all the major ocean channels. Okay. Hey, I need a category.
shake hands with. Shall we play a game? You get 4,000 clams for this one. Looks like it's time to fill in the blank. Get ready to buzz in and type your answer. Here we go. All right, how do you complete this phrase? Come on! You want it? You're the next contestant on The Price is Right! And if you hear those words, run for your life, because you're about to look like an ass. Okay, pick a category. This one likes to go by the didactic duo. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Okay, I'm sure we're all familiar with Robin the Boy Wonder's habit of saying holy this and holy that, right? Well, let's say Robin expands his rhetoric to include spoonerisms. Which of the following would be an example? Onomatopoeia. Wouldn't want to be a... Let's take a look at the right answer. A spoonerism occurs when you exchange the first letters or syllables of two or more words, such as a boot rear float, or coley how Batman. So stay tuned for the thrilling and sexually ambiguous episode where they run into Jenguin and the poker. Ouch! Think you know the attack, huh? I got news for you. Not all attacks are equal. Here's your clue. Where did that come from? And where are you going? Time to find out right now. Say it doesn't matter whether you win or lose as long as you get to play with yourself. Now get the hell away from the computer and go make some friends, cuz You don't know Jack! Beautiful people, I have not seen a show this good since 1950. Uh, never mind, roll the credits. Hey Raul, are we playing again? Hello, welcome to the ride. How many people will be playing? Well, just the one. That's fine. Is this your first time? Welcome back. I need you to type in your name. Okay, that's fine. As you know, your buzzer is the key with the B on it. So whenever you get shiny, just call for makeup, okay? Where high culture and pop culture collide. You don't know. 
Jack is sponsored by the Fraternal Order of the Fashion Police, protecting you from your outfit. It's a crime, honey. And now, put your hands together and your feet in the air for your host, Nate Shapiro. Woo! Welcome to the game. So, I understand you like to rummage through your grandmother's underwear drawer and try on her stuff. Very trendy. All right. Then zip it up and tuck it in. It's glamour time. Okay, kid. Hey, sweet. Okay, here's what we're doing. The Emperor's New Couture. All right, ready? Say a fashion designer comes up with a line of clothing called the Emperor's New Clothes Collection. If the Emperor's New Clothes Collection captures the essence of the story... Go, girl. If something is diaphanous, it's so finely textured, it's transparent, like the Emperor's non-existent clothes or the model's non-existent body fat. Oh, man, I got that much in my couch. All right, here's your category. All the best designers are geldings. So you ever heard someone who's always concerned with their clothes called a clothes horse? If a tailor were to measure a clothes horse in the way a horse's height is measured, what would he use? His hand. Your chest is two hands across. Masher. When measuring horses, four inches equals a hand. Makes sense. I mean, tailors always measure my inseam with their hands, and I'm hung like a horse. Buzz Okay, um, and the category for this one will be... Fashion tip number 27. What to wear with a pearl necklace. You got your finger ready to buzz? Okay, let's get it on. If Jackie Kennedy had made her suit suits popular, to what would she have matched her pillbox hat? Her thick layer of fat, her scaly skin, her excessive body hair, or her large birthmark? I never, ever shave after Labor Day. Hirsutism is excessive body hair, which goes a long way to explain the Bigfoot killed Kennedy conspiracy theory. Time to hey, nice going, Big Spender. Here's what we're doing. Guessing games. Okay, put your finger on your buzzer and get ready. Here we go. Guess who founded Guess? What Come on, you're just guessing. George Marciano founded Guess Fashions. He loves to play little games that one. So cute. Okay. Hop in, baby. All right, you know what to do. Buzz in on the item that connects the pairs. And don't forget that bonus. Pay attention to all the correct answers. Okay, buckle up, because we're on our way. Here we go. Drug Smuggler and Donkey and Horse Hybrid. What do these two things have in common? What do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all shirt styles? Magazine department? A best in a fashion show? Body of equipment? Exotic leather? Type of shoes? Woo! That's it, you got it! Well, if the shoe fits, wear it.
Yeah. Okay, get your bearings. The game continues. Hey, buzz in to select the value. Gotcha. Okay, coming up. I wonder if she wears boxers or briefs. Hey, you remember Diane Keaton and Annie Hall? She dressed in menswear like vests and ties. Well, which of the following historical figures could have given Annie Hall Joni dressed like a man to fight against the English in the mid-1400s? And then at the end of the movie, she leaves Woody Allen and gets burned at the stake. Okay, the category is... I'm turned on just by her smile. Uh, you know the opening credits for the Mary Tyler Moore show where Mary Richards throws her cap in the air while we hear the theme song's tagline, You're gonna make it after all, right? Well, if Mary threw her cervical cap into the air, what would be the best choice? A cervical cap is a form of birth control. And let me tell you, if Mary's throwing her cervical cap in the air, girl has got some major muscle control. You, and the category is... I'm sorry. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. What's sarong? Nothing. It's just a wraparound skirt. A sarong is a wraparound skirt. But really, it's nothing to get upset about. Okay, what's... That's what it's worth, then. Here's what it's called. What smells? Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. If Hugo Boss wanted to create a cologne from a Hugo Award winner, which of the following fragrances might be? The Hugo Awards are given for science fiction literature, and Isaac Asimov was a science fiction writer. And then you'd smell like ass. Come on. Okay. Oh, actually, it turns out that that's a pretty good pick. That's right, my friends. Sit back, crack your knuckles, because you're going to be dissing and that. This this or that questions category is... Nice slack. All right, I'm going to read off a list of seven cartoon characters. And for each one, I want you to tell me if they're typically shown wearing pants or not wearing pants. Cash in for each one you get right, but you lose out for each one you get wrong or that you don't get to. All right, you can have 30 seconds to nail all seven. And uh, here we go. Donald Duck, pants. Okay, the category is... Mom used to wear one of these, now Dad does. You know, contrary to popular opinion, girdles are not a thing of the past. There's this one you've probably heard of called, I can't believe it's a girdle. Well, if you really can't believe it's a girdle, who are you calling a liar? Maiden form, Ananias, booted a loom or Playtex. Playtex is the manufacturer of the I can't believe it's a girdle girdle. Right, Dad? Son, you'll believe it's a girdle when I take this thing off. No, no! Get out of my eyes! There's the cash, and here's the category. Dress to kill or be killed? Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. What would have been the best fashion tip dancer Isadora Duncan could have gotten? Don't forget to zip up. Keep away from wool sweaters. Don't wear a scarf, or you'll catch your death. Modern dance pioneer Isadora Duncan was killed when her scarf got caught in the wheel of her sports car. Um, ow. Hey, okay, fix your collar, dust that dandruff off your shoulders, and remember this clue. Where'd you find that getup? All right, then. Let's see if you can get it up for this. Oh, um, I think I mixed metaphors there.
Of course, that only means you kicked your own ass. You work hard for your money. At Davidson Bank, we believe your bank should work hard for your money, too. That's why we specialize in turning ordinary, middle-class people like yourself into multi-catrillionaires. Just listen. I started off with a $300 savings account, and two years later, my net worth is approximately $8.2 gazillion. We turned our life savings of $85 over to Davidson Bank, and believe it or not, we now have $16.9 my billion dollars. I I found a buck fifty on the floor of the subway. I took it to Davidson's bank and huh, here I am, a multi billionaire. I made forty eight patrillion dollars. I made two hundred. Spy episode. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to self-destruct in five seconds. Go on. How you doing? Schmitty here. So glad you could make it. This was at the top of my to-do list. Are there any questions? Too bad. Time to begin. All you have to do now is buzz in and we'll get a value for the next question. Here's what we got. $4,000. This category is known as triple X. Ready? Good. We're starting. You might think your mail order x-ray glasses are working if you look at a woman wearing a dress made from which of the following materials? Chiffon, crepe, ta- Lame. Say, isn't that French for lame? What do you say we check out the right answer? Chiffon is a see-through material. However, that grandma underwear that goes up to a woman's armpits, not even Superman can see through those suckers. Buzz in for the value. The amount for this one is 4500 Well, look what I found. Won't you be my nosy neighbor? Put your head between your knees, because we're going down live next door to the famous Frank Lloyd Wright house in Bear Run, Pennsylvania. If you hold a cup up to their wall to spy on your neighbors, which of these sounds will you hear? Sound one. Sound two. Thank goodness we've got a pickle factory in our house. <laughs> sound three. Or sound four. The Frank Lloyd Wright House in Bear Run, Pennsylvania is known as Falling Water. Why? Because it's situated over a small waterfall, that's why. And you can't beat a house where your entire basement is a toilet. Oh, come on, like you never peed in the sink. Ticket amount. The value for this question is going to be... 2,250 smackers. This one's called, Never Trust a Rodent in a Trench Coat. One question coming right up. Since it's a common name for a double agent, which of the following might old McDonald suspect is the true... 
an agent planted in an adversary's espionage organization in an effort to thwart hostile espionage is called a mole for some reason. <laughs> Haven't you learned anything from the Nature Channel? Never trust a mole. Oh, sure, they'll be all coy and friendly with you, but the moment you turn your back, <laughs> it's curtains for you, pal. Choose a value. I bet you're going to become very intimate with that value. You're about to take a bite out of a dissert ad. And this dissert ad questions category is the half naked woman behind the spy. Okay, what do you say I read off seven movie characters and for each one you tell me if. Hey, I'm ready if you are. Give me 30 seconds on that clock. And we're off. Merry good night, Bonder Powers. See ya on the top. Felicity. Plenty O'Toole. Kissy Suzuki. Ivana Huffalot. One more. Robin Swamp. That's all of them. Gee, you only got four of them right. Well, no surprises here. Let's look at your score. Hey, better than losing money. Time to pick a value. The value for this one is 4,500. Get yourself ready for, does the KGB have an HMO? So you know how spies are sometimes supposed to swallow cyanide pills if they're captured so they won't divulge any information because they'll be dead? Well, say a spy is captured and instead of his cyanide pill, he accidentally swallows a magnesium hydroxide pill. What might he experience during interrogation? A need to have a bowel movement, yeasty discharge from the genitals. Now, these are the symptoms of trench mouth, which goes very well with the requisite trench coat. Here's a good answer. Magnesium hydroxide is a common drug used as a laxative and an acid. Perhaps you're more familiar with it as milk of mag... I'll die before I give you any information. <laughs> Excuse me. Any information. <laughs> How embarrassing for me. Pick a value. Well, I'll be gosh darned. 3500 bucks. The category is... The spy who knew too much about mixing drinks. Well, just because the Cold War is over doesn't mean we have to stop spying on the Russians, right? In fact, my bartender friend risked his life to get me this top-secret recipe. Unfortunately, I spilled some beer on it and can't make the whole thing out. See if you can help me. Top-secret recipe for a white Russian. Fill glass with ice, mix one and a half ounces vodka with... Okay, comrade, finish the recipe. Orange juice, brandy and rum, Baileys and lime juice... A white Russian is a tasty little cocktail made of vodka, Kahlua, and cream. Or coffee made if you're on the cheap. Yes. Now, if I could just find out what this Kahlua is. It's clearly some sort of complex code. Pick a value. The total amount for this question is... $3,000. Well, what do we have here? A womb with a view. Forward March. Which of these items would most likely be marketed toward fetuses so they can prevent themselves from being spied on with ultrasound? A baby's... Well-educated, high-paid doctors call it sonography. Morons like us just call it ultrasound. So if you're looking for one of these protection suits, check your local Baby Gap store in the embryo section. But be careful, though. Their zygote sizes run way too big. Go ahead and grab an amount. Let's see what the total amount on this one is. 4250 bucks. Here's a little something I call, A peeping Tom is better than a peeping dick. Now, you might not know this, but You Don't Know Jack isn't the only wildly successful show produced here. No, in fact, rumor has it there's a big TV show being filmed right next door. Oh, yeah. In fact, I was looking through the peephole of the studio door when, <laughs> like you never did that. Anyway, I was able to make out part of the production schedule for the show. Check this out.
Two o'clock, make daily crank call to David Caruso. Uh, let's see. Come on, take it! Uh, yep, see, that's David Caruso, Dennis Franz, and Rick Schroeder, so it's gotta be NYPD Blue. Gee, you know, I wonder if anybody from NYPD Blue is peeking in on me. I better take a look. Oh, for goodness sake, it's the caterer. He must have figured out that I've been stealing shrimp. You will now give to me my crustaceans, or I will beat you black and blue. Buzz in for your amount. Let's see the amount on this one. 2,250 smackers. Coming at you. The spy most likely to hurt himself. Hey, you heard of, uh, this Mensa thing, right? The group society for smart people? Whatever. Suppose Maxwell, smart, is chosen to infiltrate Mensa. Which of these must he do to join the society? There you go. Hey, wait a minute, I scored in the 2% percentile range. What gives? Oh, the top 2%. Well, what about effort? Doesn't that count for anything anymore? Go ahead and choose a value. For this one, I'll give you 62.50. What in the... I can't read this. It's time for... Just unscramble the anagram, buzz in, and type it in. You move fast, you get more cash. Right out of the gate, this one's going to be worth... 62.50. Okay, now take a look at the anagram, unscramble the letters, and let me know what you come up with. I kiss eel pus. Yeah. It's a comedy movie from the 80s, if that helps. It's only the best. Go for it. Type in your answer and hit return. Spies like us, a combination of the Pink Panther and Austin Powers without the funny parts. Buzz in for the amount. The total for this question is $4,000. The category is, that's one tricky dick. Pencils ready, let's do it. On June 17, 1972, what complaint did tenants of the Watergate apartment complex most likely make to the landlord? We've got perverts wandering the halls. I don't want to lose Those guys who were caught breaking into the Watergate were with the committee to re-elect the president, or creep. Following the Watergate scandal, the country fell into a state of anger and pessimism that lasted for nearly two years until the debut of Happy Days in January of 74. Pick any amount. Here's what you can win on this one. 1250. I'm calling this one. Codename, Jolly Fat Guy. So you're aware that somebody out there knows every move you're making, right? And I'm not talking about the government. I'm talking about Santa Claus. Him and that big list of his. Creepy. Anyway. Suppose you get tired of Santa's invasion of your privacy. Which of these warnings could you send in your next letter to Santa? You're in double jeopardy, elf freak. Re Tort law protects you against invasion of privacy, among other things. And after you read Santa his rights, you can have him arrested for breaking and entering. Hey, just because he got you GoBots when you were a kid is no reason to be all soft on him. Grab a value. The amount on this question is $4,000. This category is I Spy a Question. Ready? Catch this. If you're assigned to tell a northern spy, how will you probably spend most of your time? Peeping into a beauty salon, bugging a bowling alley, staking out an orchard, or watching radar of the Canadian sky? Canada? Why the hell would Canada have any spies? They're only interested in ice skating and maple syrup. The correct answer is... A northern spy is an apple. They often try to disguise themselves by rolling in caramel and nuts and then shoving a big stick up their butt. Delicious. 
How about a value? The reward for this one is seventeen fifty. Your category is going to be: Do spy cars come with anti-lock brakes? Let's go. Suppose you want a functional yet affordable spy car. Because its engine is in the back, what car would be your best bet for leading oil slicks when being pursued? A dented 74 Ford Pinto, a dilapidated 77 Dodge Dart, a broken down 78. The Gremlin. That was one great car. Only problem is you couldn't wash it or it would multiply, and that's embarrassing. The correct answer is. Your older VW Bug has got the engine in the back. Yeah, and they're great for the classic "How many spies can you fit into one car?" gag. <laughs> you think they're done, <laughs> but the spies just keep pouring out. <laughs> oh boy, Woo. hilarious! Time to choose a value. Okay, prepare yourself. Great things are about to happen. You're almost through, but first the attack. You should already know how this works. Let's not waste any more time. Need a clue? It takes a nation of peeping toms. By the way, you look wonderful this evening. Have fun. Something stinks, and since you're the only one here, must be you. Let's assess the damage. There it is. Hey, way to go! Who knew that playing with yourself could be so rewarding? You see, this is how those dirty, bad, filthy habits start. Now lean back, close your eyes, and say. You don't know, Jack. What are you doing? I'm. Mean, what Avast! Welcome to the game! Arr, so, who else playing here? Hey, tell me, what be your name, me hearty? Give away! Okay, you be in a hurry. Great! Now get up there and grab me some loot! Just like your last voyage! Me freedom be at stake here! Be gone! By yourself today, huh? Well, don't worry. I'm gonna harass you so much it'll be like having an annoying little sidekick right there next to you. Okay, take your seats, please. It's time for liftoff. Pick a category. This one's called. Now that's what I call a great room. Pay attention, 'cause this one's worth six thousand dollars. Sure, the Great Wall of China is big, but it just seems so. Oh, I don't know, impersonal. But you could try snazzing it up a bit. Say you wanted to make the Great Wall of China more. Oh, I don't know, homey. What's the? The Great Wall is a little over four thousand miles long. Now, if we could just find a four thousand mile wide Farrah Fawcett Majors poster, we'll be all set. Tell me which category you want. Up next, 
Waylon Smithers while Montgomery burns. This one can net you four grand. It's time. Suppose on an all-new Simpsons, Mr. Burns bribes Congress to repeal the 19th Amendment. The 19th Amendment gave women the right to vote. Wow, cartoons are pretty amazing, huh? Thanks to the magic of animation, women can vote and do all sorts of neat things. How about picking a category? Your category is going to be the sun and the rain. How does four thousand dollars sound? Heads up, here it comes. In order to appear on page three of England's Sun newspaper, what would Queen? Page three of the Sun always features a bird in the buff, if you will. God save the Queen. Ugh, God save us. Time to choose a category. Allow me to introduce lovable children's TV character. Think again. Looks like this one's going for two thousand bucks. All right, this one's a fill in the blank. So you buzz in, then you type in your answer. You got it? Between Smurfette, the Cookie Monster. Go on, do it. Barney's not blue. He's purple. I believe he's modeled after the dinosaur known to paleontologists as Singing Saurus Rex. Time to select a category. Uh oh, fresh slut tits eyesore. It's time for a deliver bus test queen. Let's see if you can make sense of this category. She's as boring as boring can be. Right out of the gate, this one's gonna be worth ten grand. Okay, I'll be giving you a gibberish phrase. Simply buzz in when you know what it rhymes with. And by the way, I'll be taking away some cash every couple of seconds, so make it quick. All righty, tell me what cliched phrase does this rhyme with? Fake. All right, type the answer and hit return. Two words: return key. Well, Mr. Alien, here he is, President George W. Bush. No, no, seriously, your leader. So, what's it gonna be? For your enjoyment, stop talking to your balls, and you pocket four thousand bucks if you get this one right. Okay, in the movie Castaway, Tom Hanks makes friends with a Wilson volleyball and calls it Wilson. I know it's a movie, okay? If Tom Hanks' character were to look for other brand name sporting equipment friends when he returned home, with which of these? They're all real balls, except Harrison. <laughs> hey, but let me tell you something. In a castaway situation, that Rawlings attitude gets really old really quick. Oh, is that your coconut? Oh, I don't need to eat. Stupid baseball. Wanna pick a category? Welcome to the Jack Attack. Take note of the items you see. Buzz in on a correct match and you win money. Well, you can't wait any longer. No problem. Here's your clue. What else do they call you? You know, when you can't afford top shelf. Good luck.
Well, have mercy. You annihilated that attack. Let's check out what it did to your score. <laughs> there it is. Excellent work. I couldn't have done a better job myself. Of course, I would never play by myself because I have better things to do with my time. Now listen, I wouldn't say this to you if I didn't mean it. You don't know Jack! You don't know Jack!